Hey folks, I'm at a um, hotel room in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and catching up on <clears throat> uploading all the footage. And I look at what we did yesterday. Um, Chuck Rolls and I went out onto Lake Erie. And I have some reservations about publishing that footage. Um, <clears throat> part of me says, don't encourage people to do what we did. Part of me says, people are going to do it anyways. I I'm going to do it anyways. I worked up to it. But it was it was uh, borderline, should, even I shouldn't have been out there. Like Chuck and I both together, who have a lot of experience in big water. Um, what I wanted to go over and, and teach and... and Really, there's going to be this video and one other, and the other one's going to be about um, using the go-to function. And it was the day before, and it was it was a much easier day. Yesterday was rough. Yesterday was um, sustained winds over 20 mile an hour. Peak to trough. I'm going to tell you, we had some waves that, like, Chuck wasn't. He wasn't more than, you know. 80 feet out in front of me and he disappeared and there's a wave in between us um, it was it was big water and and it wasn't quite to the point of breaking and and honestly my home water the Chesapeake Bay at least the big water I won't go out in wind over say 15 12 is a little bit pushing it 10 tens a handful there the difference between Erie and Chesapeake, Erie's a big bowl, and you'll have big swells, and I don't think they're a problem until they're breaking. Well, on the Chesapeake, if they're, <laughs> they don't have to have that big of a wave, a wind-driven wave to be breaking. Um, anyways, they're different fisheries with different bottom contour, and... I just I want to get into the illustration to explain the concept first and then we're going to get into actually showing the footage from yesterday and, and the concepts um, the main concept I want you to take away from it if you find yourself out in in big swells and they're starting to break and you just want to get out you have to stay perpendicular to those wave sets which means you're either running in the direction that the waves are moving or against them and sometimes you have to tack you have to go past something to come back to it in order to maintain that perpendicular orientation waves are, are coming through in this direction and your kayak needs to be perpendicular we'll get into it I'll do the illustration because if they're not <laughs> You're rolling. I actually show it with the um, with the catch board, and I think it really shows it well. Let's do the illustrations, then we'll look at the footage. All right. So this was the situation we had yesterday. Uh, the wind was coming in this direction and on the way out eh, there were these are you know my signifying that they're a breaking wave here and here um, <clears throat> there weren't as many when we came back in it built up and there were more breaking waves but the the concept that I want you to to know and and it was apparent when we were heading out that we wanted our kayaks to be you know, we're in it and we're zooming along with the torpedo and we're going into it perpendicular at a right angle. So these waves are, are like this and the kayaks are moving like this into it. <clears throat> the tricky part is when we were coming back in this direction is here and there you would come over the top, you know, up one of these and as soon as you come over it starts breaking and what happens is 
Well, I'm going to show you the right way that we did it here. So you start in this position and you you charge over it and as long as you can stay perpendicular once you're on the other side, even if it's it's breaking here, um, you're good. The, the issue comes when you're in that boat, and I'm going to show it over here, and the breaking wave pushes your stern in this direction or the other. And by then it catches up with you, and I'm going to show it on this breaking wave. It turns you sideways. So when you're sideways and a breaking wave is coming over you, um, you flip. It, it'll happen. And we had that water temperature. We had dry suits on, but it doesn't change that if you flip out there, you know, it's not going to be one easy wave after another while you try to flip back over. And, and I did the, you know, the cold water safety video with Chuck that showed how to use the strap, how to get it back over. I did it in a pool. <clears throat> I did it in a pool with a kayak with no gear on it. Doing it with regular braking waves with all of your gear strapped into it, totally different. It's tough. Um, I, and I've practiced it with a black pack with some gear in it and, you know, left the torpedo and the battery and everything else. And it's, it's a mess. It's difficult. You need the strap. Go back and watch that video if you haven't. It's, uh, it's the Cleveland boat, boat show cold water safety seminar. Um, and we had the strap and we, and we could have done it, but I don't want to do it in that. And the key is really just making sure that you know, as you're coming back, and, and part of this is tricky, like say, say, you know, this is your destination, and if you have something here in the way that blocks you from getting it, you may have to tack or, or basically go beyond it, and then come around and come back up into it. But when the waves are breaking, you gotta stay perpendicular. And, and what this ha what happens here, you know, you want to be able to prevent your stern from sweep, you know, sweeping around um, by doing a sweep stroke. You know, you, you still have to have that paddle in your lap, which I go over it, you know, in in the footage, which which we'll watch here in a second. But I'm going to show one other thing, something that I I sort of comprehended yesterday even more so than I had before. Um, for big water, you want an almost an acorn shape hull. And I mean, if you do, you know, a, a cross section, like take this boat and just cut it in half, right? Chuck's, I think it's a big water 132 or a Predator. It's an old town. That has more of a an acorn shape than the one that I was in, which was the Jackson Take 2, which that's oversimplified, but that has great primary stability. And that's great for a lot of applications. But in big water, you want secondary. And that particular boat had it more than I did. When we were charging out, I had to go slower. Um, I was just... I don't say a little bit less stable. I certainly took a lot more water over the bow than he did. But it has to do with, you know, say, say you're on a steep wave like this. This hull, you know, this is the steepness of, your, of the wave. This hull, 
stays with the seat upright and will slide down a steep wave. This one, on the same steep wave, <laughs> won't stay like that. It's gonna go and be something more like this. So it's gonna tilt you over more on that steep wave. Boats with primary stability, and this applies to the inflatables that I have too. Amazing primary stability. Great for, uh, for shallow water. Um, but big water boats, this acorn shape has better secondary stability and uh, it just, it's, it's the right shape. My old, my Wilderness Systems Thresher 155 is really good at this. The, you know, the old town design is, is, is closer to that than say the, the Take Two. And the Take Two I think did fairly well. But if that's all I did, <laughs> this Lake Erie stuff, Mm, that's the shape I want. All right, let's do some editing, get the, uh, the footage in there. Hopefully some of this sticks with you in the way that you you prepare and, and understand that, hey, when I'm in that situation, above all else, stay perpendicular to the wave sets. All right, let's look at some footage. Hey folks, today I'm with Chuck Earls. And uh, we're, we're actually launching one of the places where you take your, your clients on your guided kayak fishing trip. So. Yep. Yeah, we're launching out of Central Basin today. Uh, yesterday we went up to the Western Basin. You know, fishing was a little bit slow. We still have a lot of fish over there moving into the spawn. So we're going to go out to the Central Basin, see if we can pick up some resident fish and uh, try a couple of different tactics. All right, it is common here, but I can hear it just on the other side of the break wall. You ready to do this? Yes, sir. What are we going to see out there? Well, hopefully we're going to see a bunch of walleye. What we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we got the wind coming out of the northeast. Yeah. So we're going to start out by heading to the north uh, end of the wind. So okay. we're going to the northeast. Uh, we're going to go over to a special place, check out, uh, there's a shipwreck, some structure over there, see if we can get into some resident fish or some fish moving through. Yep. Uh, but most importantly, we're going to go into the wind and get ourselves some distance. That way, at the end of the day, when we're all tired and wore out, we're not fighting back through the wind to get back. Yep, you've given the, yourself the assist at the end of the day when you're tired. Exactly. Now, the other thing, the flip side, you want to make sure that halfway through the day, the wind's not changing 90 degrees, 180 degrees. And then you're fighting the wind there, and then you're going to fight the wind back. So, gotcha. you know, pay attention to the forecast and just come up with a game plan so that you don't, you know, get out there and, and realize you're 10 miles down the shoreline thanks to the wind. Right. So. At which point you, you, you call Uber and say, do you have one with a trailer, with please? A, yeah. <laughs> Send All right. Truck. I need Let's do this. It's been a crazy ride out here in 37.8 degree water and I've soaked, but I'm not because I'm wearing a dry suit. My hands got wet. I got the fleece fingerless gloves. Chuck was kind enough to give me a pair of the hand warmers to put in because I forgot mine. Makes all the difference in the world in, in terms of maintaining your dexterity. And, uh, and I got it. So. We're gonna try. We're gonna try uh, trolling these uh, the bottom bouncer with the worm harness into the wind. So that way we're hitting these waves perpendicular as we ride them over them. All right, we got out to this spot. We fished it for a while, and uh, for sure. I mean, I, I, we're just a little bit off of it right now, but we're heading in because it's getting worse. 
we're for sure marking fish. I got my uh, worm harness down there. Um, I think I had one fish on briefly, snagged twice. Very difficult to deal with the snags out here with the waves coming up and down. Uh, what's critical, and I'm about to show you, is when you have a breaking wave, which this is, that one's on the edge of breaking, you gotta keep your head on a swivel. And I like keeping the paddle in my lap because if you're on a steep wave like this and it starts breaking, you can dig in and really turn yourself so that you're perpendicular to the wave coming at you. Whether it's hitting you on the stern or on the bow, that's your most stable. We're not surfing anything. We're just getting by. <laughs> Head on a swivel, paddle in the lap, stay perpendicular to these sets. So I will say that I'm not going back really fast. Speed is stability in whitewater for sure. When you run a rapid, you want to go as fast as possible. The same does not apply out here in this really rough, you know, really rough sets of waves and the occasional breaking wave. How that happens, and I'm gonna use the, the uh, bump board here as a, you know, to, to kind of demonstrate, this is my kayak, right? And the wave, waves are coming in perpendicular to it because we're riding, you know, back in with them. What you don't want to have is too much speed and see that's that's one that wants to break um as you it hits you perpendicular you're in good shape but if it's breaking and it catches your stern and kicks it forward and gets you sideways that's where as a breaking wave will start and then tumble you so if you're going pretty fast as is that happens easier if I really see one coming from a, a good ways off though, um, one thing I like to do is to use the motor, turn around, and just face it head on. I'm more stable doing this, running into it, and having the paddle there ready. And your forward strokes, as you're going through a braking wave, are gonna be somewhat of a brace. You know, you go into it and it's you have stability mashing into this stuff. But I'm moving in the wrong direction, so time to turn around. I don't see any breaking waves right there. Let's head in. That one's kind of steep from behind me. <laughs> Here it comes. Battle on the hand. Moving. Keep moving, but keep moving slow and steady. I got my torpedo at about, well, it jumps around a lot because of the waves, but I'm less than 100 watts and I'm moving at 2.2, 2.4 mile an hour. That's enough. I don't need to be in a rush and hit it at full speed, even though I got plenty of battery, because that much speed, it's not stable. Yeah, Chuck's right around some breaking waves. It'll be interesting. 